Chapter 15, The Stranger in Black. Lyle's plan was, Mr Penguin thought, both completely brilliant and utterly bonkers. bonkers. She was going to turn the mechanical cuckoo from the Von Plonker clock into a clockwork plane so they could use it to fly over to the fortress. Mr Penguin thought it sounded like a mad idea, but then his stomach growled. Maybe it'll sound more sensible once we've had some breakfast, he suggested. Breakfast, said Edith. Mr Penguin, we must start straight away. Mr Penguin groaned. Gordon being kidnapped had made him feel all worried and crinkly inside, and when that happened, his tummy started rumbling. They all headed over to the clock. As they walked, Colin squinted at the sleepy villagers ambling back to their beds. He was trying to spot that strange man in the dark glasses he'd seen in the bakery. He couldn't help feeling that the man was somehow involved in all this funny business. But as hard as he looked, he couldn't see the stranger anywhere, and that made him even more suspicious. Lyle unlocked a small door at the base of the clock tower and ushered everyone inside. Mr Penguin stared around, flabbergasted. Thousands of tiny cogs turned and whirred and clicked, and the huge iron hands of the clock high above them tick-tocked in a very stately fashion. Lyle grabbed her toolbox and got cracking, with Edith helping. It turned out she was a dab hand with a blowtorch. Dita fetched and carried anything his sister wanted, and Colin was there to provide any brute strength they needed. Mr Penguin decided that he was best suited to supervising proceedings, and he did this by poking his beak into everything and touching things that he shouldn't. Colin, sensing an accident was just waiting to happen, led Mr Penguin to the side and told him on his notepad all about the mysterious stranger in black. He even drew a picture of him. Hmm, said Mr Penguin, that is very suspicious. I wonder who he is and why he's here. He doesn't sound like the sort to be a hamster owner. I think we should see if we can find him. His stomach grumbled and he added casually, we could start at the bakery perhaps. It turned out the mysterious stranger wasn't in the cafe at all, but the two chums looked under all the tables and under some of the larger cakes on display in the window, just to be extra sure. However, whilst they were there, Mr Penguin and Colin took the opportunity to fill their bellies up with delicious pastries and tea. Then, after they had delivered a basket full of food and a large flask of hot cocoa to Dita, Lyle and Edith, Mr Penguin whipped his magnifying glass out again and he and Colin began to search Schneedorf on the peak for the man in black. Mr Penguin wasn't really sure how his magnifying glass was going to help, but he thought it showed the villagers that he was very much on top of things, even though he really wasn't. The two friends snooped around the village. They looked around dark corners. They listened at doors and windows. They shifted great piles of snow looking for hidden hidey holes. Well, Colin shifted piles of snow. Mr Penguin supervised while polishing his magnifying glass on his jumper. It had become very dirty from being kept in his satchel with that grubby old stone. After several long hours of looking, Mr Penguin huffed and said, Colin, this strange man of yours seems to have disappeared off the side of the mountain. Have you been a silly sausage and imagined him? With just the slightest movement of his monobrow, Colin gave Mr Penguin a look which said that Mr Penguin had proved himself to be the silliest sausage by asking that question. Colin never imagined things. Unsuccessful in their search, they mooched back to the clock to see how Lyle, Dita and Edith were doing. The workshop inside the clock was now an absolute tip. The floor was littered with cogs and tools and great splashes of stinky oil. But in the middle of the mess, glinting in the light that streamed in dramatically through the glass panels of the clock face at just the right angle was the most incredible machine. Mr Penguin couldn't believe his eyes.